Hey everyone, my name is Taylor with Green Our Planet and today we're going to be talking about lights and timers for our hydroponic system. So when you're selecting lights for a hydroponic system, there's a lot of options available. I'm going to show you a couple of my preferred lights today. One light that I like to use, especially with the aeroponic system and if I'm growing smaller things in the crack keys or wicking systems, is I like to use this two foot, two lamp T5 fixture. Uh, this comes standard with two uh, bulbs that will produce light from the white light, which is a blue spectrum. It's great for growing all plants in their vegetative state. Uh, we've even had schools use these with success, growing things like peppers and actually getting fruit from them. So they work well for pretty much any system. These uh, have a convenient on off switch as well as uh, a plug on the end so that you can connect up to 10 of these together uh, without having with off of one light fixture. Another option for lighting that a lot of people are interested in is is LED lighting. LED lighting usually come in a band they're available in a variety of fixtures as well. Uh, they work much the same as the T5 fluorescent bulbs. Uh, these Lamps, LED lamps are going to be a little bit more expensive up front, but they'll provide you with more energy savings in the long run. So um, the main difference between the two is that the T5 will cost a little less up front and be slightly more expensive running. And then this one's going to be a little more expensive up front and a little lower cost running. When it comes to mounting our lights over our hydroponic systems, you're going to want at least six inches of space between the lights and the plants. There's a variety of ways to uh, mount a light fixture over your system. One really cool engineering project is to use PVC pipes and actually allow students to design and build a stand that would hold the light over the planting system. I, I like to use these wire racks when growing hydroponics and I'm going to show you a couple ways that I've been uh, able to hang some lights. Most lights, if you purchase a fixture, are going to come with a little hanging hook like this, which is typically used if you want to hang the light from the side or different angle. Uh, I've actually found a cool way to use these. I take the uh, wire that comes fastened to the light. I then put my hook right through that loop that's provided. And then I simply pull this over and clip it onto the shelf. Another option if you don't have those hooks would be to use just some simple garden wire. So I could take a piece of garden wire, clip a little bit off, and then I could do the similar thing here where I'm going to run that through the loop. I'll pull it up through the shelf. And then I'll take my piece of wire down here once I get my light to the height that I like it. And I can simply twist that around a couple of times. And it's then going to hold my light in place to the shelf. So now that this light's uh, fastened to the shelf, it's hung up, I'm ready to actually plug this in which I've got another light right below it. I can click that on. And this lamp here is a good height for seedling, starting seedlings and doing a variety of things like that. We can put our seed tray right under that lamp, let them grow. We could also um, adjust these shelves to a height where we could put a deep water culture under that lamp. We could do a lot of things. So when it comes time to set the timer for our lights, there's a couple features on these you want to be aware of. On the top, they're going to have a switch here where you can have the timer on, where your setting on this dial is going to be in operation. Or if you want to bypass this timer for any reason, you can switch it over and you'll have the outlet on. We're going to set this up to use as a timer, so we're going to switch that over. Um, on these timers, uh, if the if the uh, tabs around the edge are lifted up, the light will be off. And if they're pushed down, depressed, then it will be, uh, the light will 
come on during that time. So what we like to do is uh, the shortest day of the year actually has 10 hours of sunlight. So we tend to recommend that as the baseline. Always set your timer for at least 10 hours of light. I typically go with 12 hours on and 12 hours off for my lighting schedule. Uh, but light's a great way that you can actually um, run experiments with your hydroponics and grow different cycles. You can grow one crop with 12 hours of light, grow your next crop with 16 hours of light, and it allows students an opportunity to compare if one grows better or faster. Um, when setting your timer, you've got this dial here that tells you which way the, uh, the uh, dial is going to rotate. So if we want our lights to come on at 6 a.m., I'm going to depress the tab there at 6, and I'm going to push this. I'm setting my timer all the way for 12 hours. So I'm going to depress these tabs all the way around to 6 p.m. Uh, so now my light will come on at 6 a.m., it will run for 12 hours, it will turn off at 6 p.m. The last step before I plug this in and it starts operating is to adjust my timer to the current time. It's about 10 a.m. now, and so we set that timer there. We're now ready to plug this in to the wall, plug our fixture in, and our light will be running on and off just like a daylight, sunrise, sunset. Occasionally, we'll use a timer for a pump rather than for a light. For example, our aeroponics system, we will have the pump come on for uh, 30 minutes and then I have it turn off for an hour. So I actually have this timer set up to where it turns off and on throughout the day. And this allows the roots a period of time to dry out in between waterings and it also saves on energy because my uh, pump isn't running all day long. I actually have a cycle where we'll miss the roots and then shut off for a period of time and then later miss the roots again. So it's a good good uh, way for teaching your students time, setting schedules, things like that. And one final thing to look out for when purchasing a timer is that you want to make sure that it has the right plug for your fixture. Um, if you have a three prong pond pump or lamp that you're wanting to plug in, this is not going to work for you. You're going to want to make sure for the most part, you're always going to want to get these three prong outlets so that you can plug in these uh, three prong pumps and lights and then attach them right to your outlet. Another thing to consider when hanging the lights is the height that you're going to hang your light over the plant. A good rule is to try and keep your light consistently about six inches from the plant but in a fixed setting like this that's not always possible this one here I have my light just about 10 inches above the plants and as you can see that works pretty well it's worked well for this system um, I can grow lettuce to nearly a full head and as well as the small seedlings still do well growing throughout their uh, cycle in this system. If your plants start to get really long and leggy with long stems and leaves that are up top, it means they're not getting enough light. And in that instance, you would want to adjust your lamp and actually put it closer to the plants. There are some hooks available that allow you to um, use a pulley system to adjust your light height from the uh, plants as they grow. Right now we're looking at our deep water hydroponic system. This one setup is actually probably for the size of these plants too far away from the light. You can see this plant over here is getting a bit leggy. This is kind of what I'm talking about when it's starting to, the plant's starting to reach for the lights. So one thing I could do is I could find another tote or something that I can put under this to elevate it up to the light. Or I could unhook my light over here and actually just lower it down a bit. To where it's closer to my system and that's going to help my plants get more of the light they need and grow a little healthier a little better all right so for our nutrient film technique you can see here that we have a similar setup that we showed you with the aeroponic system our lamp is about 10 inches above the the net cups of our system which provides enough light for our seedlings when they're young it also allows space for our plant to grow to full size. 
This currently is running on a two bulb fluorescent fixture, which is more than enough light for this, for these two rails. If you wanted to, you could actually get away with one strip lighting of either LED or T5 for this system. And you could mount it with one lamp right in between the two channels, which would provide plenty of light for both uh, planting channels and probably save you a little bit on energy.